What's up, Cycle Drag Universe? Welcome to the new home of Orange County Choppers. Yes, it's 70 degrees in the winter, so we must not be in frigid Newburgh, New York. We're here at the new home of Paul Tuttle and Company. We're in St. Petersburg, Florida. It is the OCC Roadhouse and Museum. That's right, nearly 20 years after they first exploded in popularity, OCC has a brand new home and it makes a lot of sense to me, right? If you're a motorcycle guy and you live in the Northeast, you know that riding season is very short. Well, behind me is a brand new 11,000 square foot facility that has a bike building area, a museum, a ton of good food and who knows what else. Come along with me, let's take a tour. Well, I can tell you one thing, I love New York. It's great up there, but we certainly wouldn't have the bikes out in the winter like we do here. What an ideal location. And talk about an ideal and appropriate neighbor. We're right next to a Harley dealer. It is Barracuda Harley Davidson. And we picked a good day for a little extra excitement because look at this. Yes, the crowd is checking out what we're told will be one of the largest, if not the largest flag poles in the state of Florida being erected right here behind me. How cool is that? You know the Tuttle Boys will love it. Another display of patriotism out here outside the dealership. We got one of the motorcycles from World War One. Piece of history. Pretty cool to see a little drag racing inspiration here as well. Yeah, I see a little rubber on the ground next to that Christmas tree. Looks like somebody was doing a burnout and this is very appropriate because if you remember we actually brought paul tuttle senior and mikey tuttle out to a drag race at maryland international raceway a few years ago they had a great time they were able to sniff a little nitro and check out larry spiderman mcbride and dave vantine the yeah, man. We've been waiting on you to get here. guys are big drag racing fans as well. Paul Tuttle used to drag race a long time ago. Maybe we can get them back to another drag race one of these days. How cool would that be? Please, please wipe your feet. Yes, I don't want to get in trouble with Paul. Let me wipe my feet really well. Whoa, guys, check this out. Oh my goodness. Wow, how are you? Take a look at this. We got a lot to see. And right when you walk in, you notice a lot of cool merchandise, that's for sure. Hats, hoodies, t-shirts, and look at this. Four of the most famous Orange County choppers on display. Let's take a closer look. And you know, I heard a lot of the items in Newburgh, New York were for sale. So it is nice to see these iconic legendary choppers live on down here in Florida. And maybe they will be appreciated by an entirely new audience. A lot of people couldn't make the trip up to New York from Florida. Check out this one. This one brings a tear to my eye. And I'm sure it'll bring a tear to Paul Tuttle Sr.'s eye as well because this is the pilot bike. This is the one that started it all back in 2002. This was the first motorcycle he built that launched the Orange County Choppers explosion in popularity. Let me know down in the comments how many of you followed this show. I did not miss an episode. It was awesome. Anything motorcycle related on TV was great and the personalities are what really made the show. Pleased to catch up with Chris Surface, Steeny Marketing Vice President here. This is awesome. You gotta give me the skinny. This is a motorcycle Shangri-La. How did this come to be? Oh man. So there's three big things going on here. We've got Burt's Barracuda Harley Davidson, which is one of the premier dealerships in the state of Florida and in the country. Uh, we've got Paul Sr. and Orange County Choppers, uh, also, you know, an icon in the American motorcycle industry. And then we've got Keith Overton, who owns this whole operation here at Orange County Choppers Roadhouse Museum, who has been a powerhouse in the hospitality industry in Florida for over 25 years. So basically, it's the perfect intersection of talents uh, and interest to come together and create basically the country club of motorcycles. And the boys from OCC had some of the most high-end clients. Corporate America was getting bikes built. Even NASA was getting bikes built. Take a look at this one, a total work of art. 
Now, Paul Tuttle will be the first to admit his motorcycles were not meant to go from New York to California, but they're fully functional. They start up, they run great for bike nights, which they have here. Another one of the really famous, iconic, and impressive motorcycles to come out of OCC. This is the Fallen Heroes bike. Take a look at the detail. Here's some of the little tricks that they were known for. Real bullets, real bullets and a real rifle incorporated in the build of this motorcycle. I mean, the creativity that Paul Jr., Paul Sr., and the whole gang up there had was something to be very, very proud of, that's for sure. And the good news is they may continue to build bikes because Paul actually has a workshop connected to this complex. And to this day, Paul Tuttle Sr. and his lovely main squeeze Joni are still avid riders. And you know they're gonna enjoy the 12 month riding season down here in Florida where you can break these bikes out. They've got all kind of bike nights here as well, different parties. It's a big hit, they're off to a great start, that's for sure. I know New York was sad to lose them, but Paul still owns property up in New York and says he's splitting time in between Florida and the Empire State. Just mind your manners when you're here. You don't want to touch the effing bikes. Uh, we're not gonna do that. We are gonna admire though. If you remember, every bike was built around a theme and there were also some big name celebrity clients. We're gonna take a look at uh, some of Paul's photos here in just a little bit, but how awesome is it to see these motorcycles live on? I know a few of them went to auction from customers. We've seen that on YouTube and elsewhere. It's nice to see most of them enshrined down here in the museum. So one of the biggest questions I'm sure people have is how? How did you get this many OCC bikes down here? We know some of them went to different owners. We heard a lot of stuff was sold up in Newburgh, but you guys have some of the best, most iconic so, bikes. So that's a great question. And what, what used to happen is when they were filming American Chopper, um, Senior would have all these huge corporate builds that he would do for companies like Sikorsky and John Deere, GoDaddy, et cetera. And uh, every once in a while though, he wouldn't have one of those big corporate builds and he would get to build a bike that he actually had passion for. And so that's when he built bikes like the Tribute Bike for 9-11 uh, or the NASA bike or uh, the Tribute to Dave Mann, who was an iconic illustrator for or Easy Rider magazine. And so he would build these bikes and they would either go on tour with uh, uh, the different uh, interests or they would, or he would just hold on to them. And so that's how we ended up with over a dozen. The other cool bike that we have is actually, there's two bikes in there. One is Senior's first motor Harley he ever owned that he customized, which is Sunshine. It's a 1974 Harley. And then of course we've got the iconic jet bike, which was the first theme bike that he ever built uh, for national television. Look at some of the memorabilia and trinkets Paul has collected from throughout the years. I know I read an article when they moved from New York, he said that it was just overwhelming how much stuff they had crammed into that amazing facility up there. And as I said, some of it got sold, some of it got auctioned off, but the best of it is right down here in the Tampa region in St. Petersburg, Florida. Not only are you right across the street from a major Harley dealer, I've read that Tampa's one of the largest per capita motorcycle riding centers in the, in the world. Jack, that's correct. I mean, we actually, so there are more motorcycle registrations per capita here uh, in the Tampa Bay area than anywhere else in the country. And so it makes it the optimum place to have a motorcycle themed venue. What is Senior's reaction to this place down here? Oh, Senior's reaction, well, you know, it wasn't more of a reaction than more of a con contribution because all of the stuff that's in the restaurant, Senior's got over 20 years of me personal memorabilia. Everything that's in there is Senior's personal stuff. And so actually he shipped it down here with in two shipping containers. And when it was time to put it up, he put over 200 hours into personally going out and picking the place placement for each item that you see in the restaurant. And here is undoubtedly one of the wildest creations to ever come out of OCC. I know Paul had a lot of fun with this one. Technically, I don't know if you could call this one a motorcycle or not, but they had a lot of fun with it. They took the script and tore it up. A lot of impressive engineering though, as well. You know, sometimes uh, OCC, I don't think gets credit for all they were able to do. But, um, we'll remember this one as the bike for the build off. And uh, the story here is, what Paul Sr. said, I'm just going to build whatever I want. Yep, huh? Paul's like, I'm going to build whatever I want. And, you know, he had free reign, so he said, I'm going to do a tracked vehicle with actual flamethrowers. <laughs> Worked out for him. It's unforgettable. Got the message across. All right, as promised, let's give you a little trip down memory lane and show you just a few of the big name clients OCC has built bikes for. We've got Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. We know he's a big motorcycle fan. 
Billy Joel. The former president, Donald Trump, saw that one at Trump Towers. That was an amazing bike for sure. Paul was also on The Celebrity Apprentice. We remember that well. The New York Giants, Bill Gates, Tony Stewart, Jay Leno. That was a famous build. Bill Murray, Will Smith, Dave Letterman, Sylvester Stallone, Shaq. How about Muhammad Ali, Russell Crowe, Jorge Posada and the Yankees bike, Chubby Checker, some NFL greats, Boomer Sison, Dan Marino, the King, Richard Petty. Here's Paul on with Jimmy Fallon. It really is amazing how their popularity truly exploded. There's the aforementioned Celebrity Apprentice cast that Paul did quite well on. And here's just a little taste of some of the major media that has covered OCC throughout the years. I'd love to know the total amount of magazines that Paul has been covered in over the years. This is Paul's partner with this new venture, Keith, down here. They met at a bike show, they hit it off, and that's when they decided to move OCC to Florida. Well, we've been up to Newburgh, New York. I love New York, but it's very cold up there. I'm a Pittsburgh boy, and I know you only get about six, seven months of riding season, so I'm sure Senior loves the opportunity to be out here 12 months a year, and. So do all the other riders down here it's in Florida. Been, it's been so awesome, and I don't want to speak for Senior, but I mean, I talked to him all the time, and he's really happy. We actually found him a place. He's got a farm uh, about 40 minutes north of here where he's got all of his animals, because you know he's an animal lover. Oh, yeah. And then we actually built him a shop just here on the campus, and he's building his custom motorcycles here. He's got four builds going right now, and uh, he splits his time between here and New York a little bit because he's still finishing up a couple projects up there, but the majority of the time he's down here, and when he's working in the shop, he comes over here every single day for lunch. The snap-on bike and oh, maybe my all-time favorite, the Spider-Man bike. If you were at that Maryland International Raceway Bike Fest in 2017, you know the OCC boys brought this with them. They parked it on the starting line. It was incredibly appropriate with Larry Spider-Man McBride being there. Now times are no doubt changing and the motorcycle industry is constantly evolving. Choppers aren't quite as hot as they used to be. They were red hot in the early 2000s. Now the focus has shifted towards baggers. You know that if you follow this outlet, all the racing that we cover. You know that if you come along to Bike Week with us at Daytona, we didn't see too many choppers, but we saw a ton of baggers. I wonder if OCC would ever be interested in building some custom baggers. That would be pretty cool. I don't think they have enough wall space to Put up all the collectibles and all the paintings and all the keepsakes that Paul Sr. has amassed. And how do you pick your favorite OCC chopper? I know I said the Spider-Man bike, but this one may be my favorite. This one's very, very special, very, very meaningful. I know so many of you recognize this iconic work of art. It is the fire bike. And this was built as a tribute to the firefighters who died in the World Trade Center disaster September 11th, 2001. Such a beautiful bike with so many meaningful touches. Check this out guys, on the gas tank, 343. That is the number of New York City firemen who tragically passed away trying to save others' lives. Now check this out too, you wanna to talk about a special touch. This is a piece that was recovered from ground zero. It was the last touch added to the bike. They welded that piece right onto the gas tank. How truly special it is. Look at the amount of patches they've collected. Law enforcement, fire departments, first responders from all over, firmly behind this motorcycle with those two words ringing so true, never forget. If you have ever been to one of the OCC shows, you've probably seen this bike in person because it's traveled around with them quite a bit. I know that this is one that will never be for sale if Paul Tuttle Sr. has anything to say about it. As Paul once famously said, it's not just a fire bike, it's a New York City bike. It represents so much more and serves as a memorial for all the lives lost on September 11th, 2001. My wife is a uh, emergency manager with uh, Pinellas County. Uh -huh. And so I had her send out an email to all of the fire chiefs in the county. And literally within 30 seconds, I was getting replies. And so we ended up with uh, all of our, uh, this, there's uh, 12 different municipalities in this county. All of them are represented here. Uh, even Chief Lund uh, brought his own personal helmet down that he had actually used 
uh, in a fire. Uh, it's got pictures of his daughters in it still. I mean, all this, all this apparatus that's on the wall came from local fire departments. And that is what made this show, this empire, so successful. It was about more than just motorcycles. It was about emotion, passion, tributes, and wild characters. Another special emotional tribute here with the Powell MIA motorcycle. So much attention to detail. I love the chassis too. I love the frame. Speaking of the frames, it's a story many of you heard on Cycle Drag YouTube, but did you know our own resident top fuel motorcycle racer, Sam Wills, built many of the frames for OCC and he was put under some pretty crazy deadlines. Check this out. Not a lot of people know that you were the chassis builder for many Orange County chopper machines, including arguably the most famous creation to come out of OCC, the fire bike. What was the tightest deadline they ever gave you? Because I know that some of these bikes had to be done in day's notice. They literally would call on a Tuesday morning and have to have a frame in New York by Friday. How is that even possible? Got enough people, you can do anything. Wow, <laughs> awesome, Sam. You know, and you fly them. That's right. And, and, and uh, you know, it, it was crazy times. It certainly was. Well, it's something to remember, guys. Sam Wills, he's one of the quickest top fuel motorcycle racers in the world. And you may not have known, built some of the most impressive OCC chassis. What I like too is you see pop culture go up very, very fast. It can come down just as quickly. We see ebbs and flows, but it seems like this is a new beginning for OCC. We know they peaked in popularity a few years back, but now you're bringing it to a totally new demographic, right? And something that I mentioned too is, uh, look at the explosion of baggers now, yes. right? Choppers might not be as hot as they used to be, but we know fads come, fads go. I think choppers will again be hot. Look at all the fashion right now. What's cool? What was cool in the 80s, the 90s? It's all gonna come full circle, but do you feel like this is really the next chapter, the evolution of OCC. Absolutely, and I mean, like I said, he's still building cool bikes, and the great thing now is that he's uh, he's building bikes that he really wants to build. And so, the uh, you know, and, and obviously the fad of the fat tire, big thing bike has kind of gone its way. He's building some really cool old school choppers, some really cool raked out, awesome intricate paint job stuff, but he's also starting to dabble into the baggers a little bit. <laughs> uh, there's been talk of a cafe bike. There's, a, I mean, you never know what's gonna happen. Where's his workshop at from here? So his workshop is just right on the other right side. Right on the other side. How about that? So he's still busy. And if you really follow OCC closely, you know the way they hooked up with Larry Spider-Man McBride was with the Lawless electric bike. This thing was awesome. It was featured on an episode. Larry and Steve McBride took it in. They made a ton of upgrades to it. OCC made a ton of upgrades to it. And together, this group would go on to break the world record for an electric vehicle. Leave it to the Spider-Man, huh? The front wheel in the air. 6-9, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 201. First for the run. Last thing I gotta ask you about here. We know we made history with the Spider-Man Larry McBride and the electric bike about a decade ago. I'm hearing the lawless bike may resurface here real soon. So I don't think we can talk fully about that, uh -oh, but uh -oh, okay. rumor has okay. it that, that America is going to be taking the record back for the, speed, the land speed record for the electric motorcycle wow. back from the guys from Denmark, and it's gonna happen this year. True Cousins. Or next year, sorry. We cover True Cousins on this channel. Congratulations to them. We cover Steve Hoff. We were in Tucson at about midnight when he ran the first 200 mile an hour electric dragster pass. Beat Big Daddy Don Garlitz to the feet. How about that? Yep. Uh, Jeff Dysinger, another one of the big players. We were at the drag strip last night, watched a Tesla take on a Harley live wire. So love it or hate it, guys. Electric is here, and after being parked for several years i think it's time to get occ back in the electric game it's gonna be fun man it's gonna be fun awesome bike man we've also got two huge uh, stages where we do live entertainment every night We've got the, one of the best culinary teams in the state. We're more than just bar food. We're family friendly. We've got pool tables and shuffleboard and cornhole and all kinds of stuff for families to do here. Uh, we're open seven days a week from 11 to midnight. It, it, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And of, course, and of course, that doesn't even begin to touch on all the events. Look at all the events going on here. New Year's Eve party coming up. We've got a wrestling event here. 
pretty cool. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. This place is awesome. And check this out, guys. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Looks like chopper seats when you're sitting at the bar. That's attention to detail. I want to show you another cool feature, too. Let me make sure there's nobody in here first. Yeah, guys, look at the sinks in the bathroom. A lot of attention to detail here. It is a true motorcycle hangout, a true motorcycle hotspot. Here with the one and only Bert Barracuda. Bert, I gotta ask you, what's it like to have OCC as a neighbor? Well, it's more fun than you could ever imagine because it's like being a kid in a candy store every day of the week, man. It is so cool. Has this really helped out your dealership and Absolutely. brought more people in? Absolutely, because what you find is there's a whole market out there that doesn't realize who we're really about. And they come there for lunch or dinner, and they experience it, and then they walk into the store. It's amazing. I see a ton of baggers over there. You think the choppers are going to come back? Oh, are we well, going to see are. them? Oh, yeah. We're okay. going to do a few. I like them. I'm going to do one personally for me, just for grins. Well, we're going to come back and cover that. Yes. Last thing i got to ask you about that I know Paul Tuttle probably loves is they're telling me the highest flagpole in Florida Correct. is being erected. What's right the story now. here? Well, it's real simple. You know? Uh, we wanted to make sure that the first responders, the military, are all represented. We built a memorial out here to make people understand what the Harley-Davidson motorcycle did for World War I, all the way up into Desert Storm. And we wanted to memorialize it with the largest American flag in the state of Florida, and that's what we did. Very cool. Thank you for what you do. You bet you. Thank you, sir. Well, here's the big thing. The food is great. Absolutely. Well, guys, was that awesome or what? And take a look behind me. The flagpole is up. And not just any flagpole, the highest flagpole in Florida. Kudos, Barracuda Harley Davidson. Wow. So, guys, much more coming. We're going to do more with the Tuttles. Stay tuned. If you have any questions, if you have any stories, any memories, leave them down below. And if you like that video, Here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle and you know if there's anything fast motorcycles or OCC, we are in. Cycle drag rolls on.